I'm Armani. Um, I'm an artist. And when I was a kid, I was terrified of thunder and lightning, like terrified. I think my family's in the audience, they could tell you I'd run around the house and unplug everything and hide in the tub. It was, it was awful. But I believe that thunder and lightning was God's way of punishing me for whatever harmful and evil act I've done. Mind you, I'm a kindergartner at a time, so I don't know how much harm I could have done, but believe me, I thought I had it coming. Um, and part of the way I would try to counteract that punishment was promising God that I would love all of the ugly colors. And one of those ugly colors included orange. Now, <laughs> I didn't know that this color would have such significance later on in my life, but it ended up having that significance. But we'll get to that later. Also, when I was younger, um, I used to, I still do love cartoons and superhero movies. You know, I love the colors and the characters and. I love the fact that these people and these events could solve their problems by flying or shooting lasers out of their eyes. But two things happened when I realized that what was happening on the screen wasn't real. The first thing I realized is I cannot, in fact, shoot webs from my hands. And the second thing is that the people behind these screens were drawing and creating something, and it gave me the encouragement and the power to be able to create and draw what I was imagining and what was in my head. So I'm an artist, um, but it took a while for me to even say that to someone, let alone a whole crowd of someones. And this started because I was growing up when your parents see that you don't have aspirations of becoming a doctor or a policeman, they try to, you know, narrow things out. So the conversations were always, oh, art's risky, there's not that many jobs in art, it's not a stable job. And I felt like my talents weren't being nurtured, recognized, yes, admired at times. But when people did recognize my talents, it was to push it in more of a practical sense. So as well, since you draw, you know, you could probably be an architect. You know, they draw their blueprints and their sketches and stuff like that, which was fine. So for a while, I've been pursuing architecture, and even though that architecture was this way of narrowing out all these illustrations and images I was having in my head that people didn't understand, I actually found a passion for it. But one person that did understand was my cousin. His name's Courtney. Um, I grew up in, on a really rough street in Hyde Park in Boston. You know, It became a normality to you go down the street and you'd see candles and teddy bears at the corner mem memorating somebody's life. That's the kind of life that I lived. And, the male role models in my house, they were on and off the streets, some of them in and out of jail. So that's the kind of environment I grew up in. So all the time I didn't see them. I was with the female representatives in my household, the women, my nana, my grandma, my aunt, and my cousins. They were the time that they were the people that I spent most of my time with. And they taught me to be strong and compassionate. And they taught me that boys have emotions too, which is something was, it was an epiphany to me at the time. I didn't recognize that people could do that, boys, at that fact. And also somebody who nurtured that same thinking was Courtney. And I remember when I was in first grade or kindergarten, I came home and I was bawling my eyes out. I was crying because the kids at rug time decided to tease me for my favorite color being orange. And that may not seem like a big deal to you, but as a first grader, that is detrimental. My life was over at that point. But when he walked through the door that day, I toughened up, chest out, but he caught me. My face was puffy. My eyes were red. And he's like, what's wrong? And I broke down the situation. And he told me some things I can't tell you guys, but the premise of it was to not let anybody knock me down or stop me from doing what I love. And he encouraged me to keep doing what I love. In his sense, it was loving the color orange, but that stuck with me. He even went a step further to tell me that his favorite color was orange. And I don't know if that's true or not, but him just saying that <laughs> meant a lot to me. Um, unfortunately, though, on January 24th, 2010, uh, Courtney was shot and killed. Um, I remember waking up at 5 a.m. in a panic. And in a family where people getting shot is kind of a normalized thing, you become desensitized. So he's like, all right, he's all right. He wasn't. Um, we lost him that same morning. And 
a year and a half prior to that, I just went through foster care. And when your life is falling apart, you need something to kind of stabilize it. And art was that stabilizer. Art was my rock. So I'd stay up in bed in my foster family's home, drawing okay. pictures. And it was my way to come back home, mm -hmm. in a sense. But I remember particularly on the morning that he died, we were all sitting in the lobby of the hotel. And when his mother came down, my aunt, and told us that she had pulled the plug, that there was nothing else that they could do, I remember my uncle, he had an orange juice in his hand. And in his emotions, he threw it at the window. And that sunk with me because, one, this is a man who ran the streets. And this is the first time I saw him cry. And also, as he threw the orange juice, it splattered all over the window of the lobby. And I remember watching me and my cousin's favorite color dripping down. And at that moment, orange became so much more than a mix of red and yellow, but rather than it was a promise to him that I was no longer going to let anyone stop me from doing what I love. And I was going to use the encouragement he gave me to pursue everything that I had in me to follow art. So after all of this, I was an artist. It was set in stone, steel and signed. No one could tell me different except for me. Um, at that time, I had just transferred from a charter school into an exam school. If you don't know what an exam school is, it's a school you got to take an exam to get into. Um, and this was a really big switch up for me. I went from being, humble brag, sorry, the smartest kid in the room to being shrouded by a whole bunch of smart kids and you kind of lose your spotlight. And that was a big transition for me. You know, from a charge school for a small environment to such a big environment, I didn't know how to take that. And so all at the same time as well, I wasn't comfortable where I was artistically. You know, when you're growing physically, you're supposed to grow in your ability. And I felt like I wasn't doing that. And there was a whole bunch of other factors that kind of were collapsing down on me. So in November of 2014, I attempted to take my own life. I was 13 at the time, and I just wasn't comfortable with who I was, what I was doing, or where I thought I was going. But in terms of art, I also felt like my creativity was lacking, and I felt like there was no one there to appreciate it like Courtney was, and that is until I got a job. So finally, somebody recognized that I love art, and he told me, he was an upperclassman, his name was Diego, he went, hey, man, like, there's this cool place in South Boston that you can draw and like, make art, and you can listen to music and stuff like that. And at first, I was offended. I was like, why would you lie to me? Like, That's not a place. It doesn't exist. <laughs> he was telling me that you could get paid to make art. And I was like, all right. So I gathered up my courage, and I went to South Boston, and I took a tour. And it was great. Everything he said was true. And I applied. And I got the job. and. I wanted to be there. It was a place that I wanted to be where I feel like my talents were being recognized and pushed to the limits. And then a few months later, Artistry Humanity, the job that I got, they reciprocated that feeling of wanting. And they asked me to join them in the hiring process, which was crazy because I can't even do my homework. So like, let alone getting somebody into a building to get a job. It was insane to me. But to go from being in a rut and then entering this place that got me out of that to be a, being able to give that back to somebody who may or may not be going through the same thing to me it was crazy. And at that moment, my art became less about more of what I could show and more about what I could tell. And during my first few months at the job, I was trying to paint like the other kids. Everyone's creating these crazy murals and like landscapes and portraits. And, I couldn't do that. My art existed inside notebooks and margins of work papers. And my and Maciel, my mentor, she recognized that. And she pushed me to create that on a canvas. And I did, and it sold. And then art at that moment became what it always was, an escape. An escape to relieve the reality of my cousin passing, of foster care, and all these hardships that I was going through. So. I've been here 17, 18 years, and I've never really broken down why orange is my favorite color, you know? You know, all the other colors, there's instant word association. Red, anger, hunger, whatever. Blue, compassion, serenity. 
But orange, you got to do a little bit of more digging to figure out what it means. And when you do do that digging, you get encouragement, happiness, joyfulness, change, determination. And since I'm really bad at conclusions, I can only think of one word that sums up how everything has led to here, and that's orange. Thank you. <laughs>